Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Smoked Alive, and today we are here for the second episode of Plastic. Just a disclaimer, this video is about Victoria's Secret fashion models. I have been very nervous to film this video because I do not want to offend anyone. I am not bashing any specific models in this video, and I am not saying being skinny is bad. I'm gonna repeat that. I am not saying being skinny is bad. Okay? I am simply trying to show you what is happening in our society and the expectations that are being made in order for someone to be beautiful. Okay? So, with that being said, let's get into the video. So, I'm going to be hitting three main points, and the first main point we are going to talk about is Victoria's Secret model requirements. So, for this section, I did get this from an article about a fitness trainer that actually became a Victoria's Secret model within a four-month process. So, the whole article is about her process, the requirements of the angels, what she had to do, all of that. So, that is where I got a lot of this information from. So, let's keep going. Victoria's Secret requires all of their angels to be five foot nine and to have a 24 inch waist and to have an 18 percentage body fat ratio. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> The Victoria's Secret creative director said that it is actually like being an Olympian and you actually have to be in peak condition. The trainer in this article that actually became a Victoria's Secret model by losing weight and training and stuff, she said that it, it is actually like having a military mindset and you actually, it's almost kind of impossible to have a normal life outside of everything they have to do in order to meet the requirements of being a Victoria's Secret model. So an average healthy fit woman that is actually active and in the gym and is taking care of their body, their normal body percentage of fat is 24%. And I want you to keep in mind the Victoria's Secret models is 18%. They have to be at that. I do know some of them are below because a lot of them actual, actually struggle with anorexia. There's a ton of articles on it. So this lady that became a Victoria's Secret model in four months was actually, I'm pretty sure she was a trainer or someone that just worked out a ton. Like you could tell she was super tiny, but she still did not make the requirements of a Victoria's Secret model. So in this process, she actually had to cut all carbs out, all sugar. She could not even eat fruit. Fruit. Like that is like a God-given thing for us to eat. So I want you to think about that. Me Caprice, I'm going to meet the requirements of a Victoria's Secret model in four months and I can't even eat fruit. All I can eat is chicken and vegetables. Yay! So in 2012, Adriana Lima revealed that she actually had been on a liquid diet for nine days before the pre-show. So basically what a complete liquid diet is going to do is it's going to make your muscles more prominent. It's going to make everything stick out. It's going to make you look a little bit more fit, but... This is a bodybuilder's like technique and it actually dehydrates the body so it's not crazily healthy and you can actually lose up to eight pounds in one week. So I'm guessing about half of them are on a liquid diet and some of them could potentially losing up to eight pounds just to look good on the runway. I don't think you should have to keep this amount of restriction on your body in order to be considered beautiful and to make a requirement in order to be in underwear. Just saying. So in this article, the fitness girl did take a nine day liquid diet and she said she felt like crap. Her body was completely dehydrated. She got really sick and that she's really not for it. So a fact that a fitness woman that is working out every day and super active, taking care of her body is struggling in order to maintain what these women have to maintain on a daily basis really breaks my heart. And actually doctors have studied Victoria's Secret models. They will not claim what model or whatever, but they have actually studied their diets, how much they do, their flying, all of their activities. And that they say some of them are on the brink of actually an eating disorder and that it is very unhealthy to continue their lifestyle on a daily basis. I want to paint a picture for you guys, for you guys to realize how much work these women are really putting in and how unhealthy it is for some of these women and how a lot of them are actually taking it a little bit too far to be considered beautiful. 
Okay, so the second main point that I want to get to is before and after pictures slash just pictures of Victoria's Secret models and a little bit of behind the scenes of these pictures. So the first Victoria's Secret model that we are going to talk about is Gigi Hadid. Now, I am not bashing any specific models. I just really want to use her for an example because she's a very good example. So this is her before and after picture. I will put it somewhere here. This is her before and after picture of before being a Victoria's Secret model and after becoming a Victoria's Secret model. You can clearly tell the amount of weight that she has lost. If you look at her arms, her stomach, even her boob size, everything has completely shrunk. Her face looks a little more sunken in. She doesn't have a little bit of plumpness in her cheeks anymore. She is completely different. So I wanted to bring her up because I don't have the link to this and I'm sorry, but I did see an Instagram video of her talking with her mom about how much she could not stand to maintain this amount of weight and what she has to do in order to model. Because in modeling agencies, if you guys don't know, they literally pick apart your body. They will go to you and be like, you're fat, you need to lose this, you need to lose that, blah, 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 blah. And a lot of you guys have heard the controversy on Gigi Hadid and how she was fat and she was a fat model. If she's fat, I'm obese, right? I mean, come on. And this is her before picture. So I just wanted to show you guys the before and after and talk about that video that she made because in the Instagram video, the mom's like, well, isn't it worth it? She's like, well, yeah, after I see myself in pictures and I see myself on the runway, all the hard work is worth it. But in my head, it makes me sad because I'm like, you shouldn't have to go through that much work for it to be worth it because I think she looks great before she lost all of this weight in order to be a Victoria's Secret model. I mean, <sighs> Think about it. It is a military mindset and they're putting these requirements on these models. If you have to look like this, you have to be this, you have to be this tall or otherwise you won't make it. And a lot of you guys don't know me, but if you do know me, I used to do CrossFit and I used to work out a lot and I worked out too much and it was way too hard on my body and I was actually trying to do what these women were doing because I wanted to become a Victoria's Secret model because that's what I thought I had to do in order to be beautiful and I will tell you I couldn't even get to what they do. It is not easy and my mind was unhealthy because it was all about restriction, all about not being good enough and about making a requirement that someone had created for me. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys a picture of Marilyn Monroe and a picture of a Victoria's Secret model. Look at the difference. So, Marilyn Monroe was considered the most sexy, most beautiful woman in the world. Now, she is considered one of the most beautiful, sexy women in 2016. Look at the difference. But I wanted to show you guys the difference that has happened over the years. What beauty has become over the years. Marilyn Monroe, they would turn her down so fast in a modeling agency. She would walk in there and they would think she was a joke. They would say she was fat. They would require her to lose 20 pounds, to shrink her inch or her waist, everything. She would not make it. I think Marilyn Monroe is beautiful. I'm not saying she's not beautiful, but what I'm saying is there's this gnarly requirement that has just gone too far. I don't think that the modeling agency really shows how thin and how much strain these bodies are going through. It is not being portrayed through Photoshop, through lingerie, through lighting, through all this stuff. All of a sudden it becomes this byproduct of what everyone wants to look like because they think she is pretty. So now I'm gonna go to another article that I read from Cosmetologian and this is the model right here. So she was called fat. What? This sucks. Like, I'm sorry, but this generally really pisses me off. She is not fat. I don't know what kind of world we live in, which is exactly what I'm trying to portray. That is not fat. That is not overweight. That is absolutely nothing even close to what I have ever considered or anyone considers fat. 
except for the modeling agency slash Victoria Secret. Yeah, I just really wanted to show you guys a picture of her and be like, she is considered fat. So these are the requirements that they are putting on these women. Gigi Hadid is fat. She's fat. You have to be this amount of inch waist, this thin, this amount of body percentage. You better have a military mindset. You can have a thousand calories a day. You're not going to eat fruit if you're going to do that. Oh, guess what? It's pre-show. You're going to do a nine day all liquid diet. So you look thinner, even though your body is in complete dehydration mode. Because that's what it takes to be beautiful. Bull crap. I'm sorry. It is bull crap. Oh, real quick before I move on. In this article, she does talk about other models and how she tried to give one of the models some peanuts because she was eating them for a snack. And the model was like, oh, I guess I'll have those for my dinner. And she had four. Four. So because this industry is saying you're fat, you're this, you're that, make all these requirements, these women are not eating. She was saying like the industry is not all fun and games. And it's not. And I think you guys need to know that modeling isn't just this glamorous, fun thing. It's grueling and it is really, really hard. Now we're going to hit my third point to this video and Victoria's Secret's company. It is the Victoria's Secret message. So Victoria's Secret is the biggest lingerie company in the world. I have a question. Why don't they carry plus size lingerie? Just curious. So they did this whole campaign about like, love your body, um, you're perfect, the perfect body. I will post some pictures here. Boop, 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 boop. Wherever they are, they will be sifting through as I'm talking about this. Number one. Every single one of these models is the same exact size. Every single one. Here we are. We're creating a campaign about loving your body, being beautiful, and being comfortable with who you are and being like, I have, I'm perfect and I have the perfect body. So, so many people were like, wow, go Victoria's Secret. They're finally recognizing other women. They're recon recognizing that women aren't all like 90 pounds and 5'9", and they're recognizing that there's different women in the world. But, but, <sighs> there's always a but. <laughs> I want to challenge you and say, why aren't there different body types on this campaign? If they are so for the perfect body, loving yourself, being comfortable with who you are, why aren't they willing to have different sizes of women in their campaign? I mean, I can understand if they were like, okay, well, we don't want them all the time, but at least for this campaign, we'll allow other women in different sizes. No, we're not going to have it in either. So I want to propose to you that question, or not propose to you, but I want you to think about that. Why? Don't they have other size women in a campaign that is about embracing who you are? Also, another thing about this campaign, um, if they're talking about loving yourself and being comfortable with who you are, why are they making requirements? I'm going to say that again. If they are talking about loving yourself but yet creating a requirement for what they need to look like, it completely defeats the purpose. So sure, the company's doing this awesome campaign, but they are literally defeating the purpose of their campaign through the way they run their company. If I'm going to have a lingerie company and I'm going to talk about loving yourself and loving who you are, I'm not going to put all these crazy restrictions on a model. I'm not going to make them only eat a specific thing. I'm not going to make them go on a nine day water fast and I'm not going to make every single one of the girls in my campaign ad look the exact same. I'm going to put a super skinny girl. I'm going to put an heavier girl. I'm going to put a curvy girl a in between, whatever. I'm going to put different types of women and saying 
all of this is okay, not love yourself, but yet I'm gonna make a requirement for all the models and you have to look like this in order to be on my campaign about loving yourself. So I personally don't believe that the Victoria's Secret company's message is good. I don't think they're providing a healthy outlet for young women. I don't think they're creating a standard that really says love yourself and be comfortable with who you are. I think they're saying be comfortable with who you are if you look like this. It's not practical for daily life. So we're creating a standard for women that basically doesn't exist and that's my problem. So I want you guys to understand that Victoria's Secret is not just a laundry company. They're not. Having a Victoria's Secret model body is not as glamorous and as pretty as you think. That's what that model herself was saying. She's like, this job isn't that glamorous. It's not as beautiful as people think it is when they look at a campaign or a magazine. Their full-time job is to become everything society thinks they need to be in order to make money. Okay, so I could keep going on this, but I want you to know that you are beautiful, you are loved. If you don't look like a Victoria's Secret model, if you do, it doesn't matter. The point is being who you are, being who you want to be, and knowing that who you are is good enough, and you don't have to do everything society tells you because it's not as glamorous as you think. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the second episode of Plastic and I will see you guys sometime next week with a tutorial.